Today's review is sponsored by new lie detector jock straps. If you lie, they tighten around your special place. Telling the truth, it's better than getting kicked in the nuts. Watch it, Alan, I'm shooting. Almost human. Listen, boys, I've got lots of money. <laughs> Eurocrime was a big genre in Italy during the 1970s, and like with many Italian movies, its beginning came from American movies. The era of spaghetti westerns was coming to an end. These Italian cowboy movies were created because of how popular American westerns were, so naturally, Italy took this genre, made their own westerns, and made them their own, giving us classics like The Dollars Trilogy and Django. <laughs> Django. The title of a film you'll never forget. However, in America, the popularity of westerns began to decline, and the cowboy was replaced with cops, gangsters, and vigilantes. With movies like Bullet, The Godfather, Dirty Harry, and Death Wish, crime cinema exploded in America. The same thing happened in Italy. Spaghetti westerns came to an end. The Italian film industry saw how popular these cop and gangster films were in America, so they had Italian filmmakers create some for Italy. As I've said before, Italian production companies insisted that filmmakers make movies that were like popular movies. So if a genre was big in America, you can bet your ass that movies were going to be made in Italy to cash in on the craze. And thus, Eurocrime was born, or Policieski. <laughs> Most Human was directed by Umberto Lenzi. He's mostly known by fans of Italian horror. But as much as I love his cannibal movies, Eurocrime is where he excels. He gave us the Tough Ones, Violent Naples, The Cynic, The Rat, and The Fist. He gave us so many great Eurocrime films. <laughs> They're a shame, Papa. They're a shame because we haven't got the money right now. Many Italian directors took a swing at Eurocrime. Lucio Fulci dabbled a little in the genre, and even Ruggiero Diodato of Cannibal Holocaust fame tried his hand at Eurocrime. Almost Human stars one of my favorite Italian actors, Thomas Millian. He plays the biggest son of a bitch who has ever son of a bitched, Giulio Sacchi. Come on, what's wrong? So I killed her. I murdered her. So what? Oh, I even went to the police. So what? Giulio is a small-time crook with a bad violent streak. If he's committing a crime, no matter how small, if something goes wrong, his first instinct is to kill whoever's in his way. Now look, if this car's yours, move it, or else I'll have to give you a ticket. So? Of course, he does that even when things are going right. With the help of two fellow small-time crooks, they kidnap the daughter of a wealthy businessman for a large ransom. And Giulio makes it very clear that even when they get the money, they're still going to kill this girl. It's up to Detective Walter Grandy, played by Henry Silva, to find these killers, because he knows if that ransom's paid, this girl's as good as dead. Now look, let me tell you something. You cannot deal with these criminals. If you pay them, your daughter is as good as dead. She's finished. Right off the bat, Thomas Millian is great in this movie. Usually I hate it when the main characters in my movies are assholes, but when we're following the villains, I'm fine with it. We're not supposed to be rooting for them. Julio is one of the biggest scumbags ever put on film. He is truly a homicidal maniac. He kills people over pocket change, for Christ's sake. Nice work, son. Now I think you ought to go brag about it to the lieutenant. Come on, move. Even Freddy Krueger would tell this guy, man, you're going too far. He's one of the most unpredictable villains. He can go from one to in the blink of an eye. We don't like to be in debt, Papa. Papa! 
What have you done? I'll murder you, you punk! Julio does not discriminate against who he kills. He's also a bit of a sadist. Whenever he gets going, he has this big smile on his face. He enjoys killing and causing pain. There's this scene where he has a bunch of people hanging from the chandelier, and he plays a game of Russian roulette. <laughs> okay, I owe you a million bucks, but first I think I should do a good thing for the losing lady here. In addition to his violent nature, he has this weaselly quality. You mix that with his intelligence. He's always one step ahead of the police. All these elements mixed together, you're fascinated by Julio, but you also hate him so much. You want to see him get his in the end. That makes for a good villain. And I have to salute Thomas Millian. He shines when he plays these larger-than-life characters. That's why he's one of my favorite actors. When I get your daddy's money, you know what I'm gonna do with it? I'm gonna wash my hot dog in champagne every single morning. Unless, of course, you'd like to do it for me, honey, huh? On the other side, we have our hero, Walter. Almost Human is a movie that focuses more on the villain than the hero, but Walter is still a great character. He's that cop we've seen in movies before. He's seen so many criminals get away, he's been beaten down by the system he's forced to follow. We're on his side because he knows what's going on. You know, no wonder they think we're a bunch of assholes. We bring them in, and in 24 hours, they're out. You know this car thief you told me about? He'll be out tonight seeing cars again. He knows these nut jobs are going to kill this girl, whether they get the money or not. It's a nice twist for Henry Silva, because he's mostly known for playing bad guys. It's nice to see him play the hero. Have you heard from your daughter? No. No, I haven't. They're gonna call you, here or at home. First the kidnapping, then the telephone call, and after that the exchange. American actors working in Italian movies was very common. Fred Williamson, John Saxon, Yul Brenner, Charles Bronson. Henry Silva was in many Eurocrime movies, and he gave a great performance every time. The movie is a little front-heavy when it comes to the action. There's a great car chase in the first act. Car crashes all over the place. Jesus, can't you do something? Step on it! And there's an added element of tension in this scene because Julio and his goons have kidnapped a child as a hostage. Get in the back! Get in the back! Get Mama, Mama! Ah! Get going! Mama, Mama! Oh, no! The action takes a back seat for the rest of this movie, but it does not hurt the film. The action is replaced with suspense, because at any moment, Julio could snap and kill somebody. I encourage everyone to watch Almost Human, and check out some other Eurocrime movies. If you're looking for some solid gangster crime thriller action, you'll get it here. And with that, let's get to the Grindhouse rankings. We've got a body count of 16. The kills mostly consist of gunshots, but there are a few drownings and stabbings here and there. The gunshots are great, though. Giulio is one of the best villains in Italian cinema. You hate him so much, but he's such a well-created bastard, and he's unpredictable, so he puts you on edge. We've got a good protagonist in Walter Grandy. We attach ourselves to him because he knows what's going on, but nobody listens to him. The side characters are great, too. They help bring this movie to life. There's some great action in the first act, and it's replaced with some suspense after that. There are so many tense scenes in this movie. I'm giving this a 4.6 out of 5. This is a well-done thriller with a great villain, and it's a good introduction to Eurocrime. As always, I want to thank all of you for watching and supporting my channel. If you're new here, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you like what I do here, or give it a thumbs down if you don't like what I do here. Leave a comment down below. Let me know some of your favorite underrated villains. This is the Maniac, here to remind you that the Grindhouse will never die.